While Fuller House may be a family show, the Fullest House podcast is not. Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the Fullest House podcast where we're going to get all the gold stars. I'm Zach Horowitz. I'm Mark Green. And I'm Harrison Bloom. Guys, happy Pioneer Day. Yay! It's Pioneer Day! It's Pioneer Day! Pioneer Day is the best holiday that nobody cares about. Ah, It's me, Mr. Pioneer, mascot of Pioneer Day. It's me. Hey, kids. Hey, kids. It's me, Pioneer Phil. I'm the mascot of Pioneer Day in Utah. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait a minute. Pioneer (laughs) Phil, we had an agreement. What? What was the agreement? You keep, your jurisdiction was Utah, and me, Mr. Pioneer, would be the mascot for all other states. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about it over the past year, and I'm thinking this dis- distribution isn't quite fair. No, it's it's my job to give all the good little boys and girls shiny rocks. Wait, wait, what does Pioneer Phil give to the children of Utah? Also rocks, but don't, don't, don't question it. It seems like you have to step it up a bit if you want to compete with Pioneer Man, Mr. Pioneer. All the boys and girls bake pies, and if they've been good, the next morning they'll find shiny rocks in their pie. What are these shiny rocks (laughs) made of? That that seems like a choking hazard. What do you want from me? (laughs) All I'm saying is that seems like a health and safety hazard. Minerals, sediment, I don't know. I don't make the rocks. (laughs) Well, they give me, they they make pies for me, and I put rocks outside of the pie, so that way they don't choke on the rocks and die. But then it's not a surprise. <laughs> I mean, if you walk down to your to, to your living room in the Pioneer House and saw a rock there, you'd be like, "Whoa, what's this cool rock doing back, here?" Back in Pioneer days, children died all the time. That's why it's <laughs> part of the holiday. <laughs> You know what? I think you got a point. <laughs> Pioneer Day just exists as like a government ploy to bring down overpopulation. <laughs> he knows too much. We gotta put you rocks got in his it. pie. <laughs> it's the purge. Oh no. It's anyway, I have to go. Oh, oh, oh. Merry Bye, Mr. Pioneer, Pioneer okay. Day. Bye, Pioneer Phil. Bye, Pioneer Man. Pioneer Phil snuck out the back door while that entire monologue was happening. Oh, he but, just uh, left? Tyler, I need to, I need to ask, uh, Tyler, do Pioneer Man and Pioneer Phil get gold stars? <laughs> and for our listeners, um, piece of advice, I guess if you're going to do a bit, I guess maybe plan it out ahead so you don't both do the same <laughs> bit. <laughs> and then have dueling ho- fake holiday mascots. I don't know what that's about. That's just, that's an unrelated piece of advice. I'm, I'm very happy we could have Mr. Pioneer and Pioneer Phil on. Pioneer Man officially does get a gold star. Pioneer Phil does not, as as given by Tyler. Well, that's that makes sense because he's a regional favorite. First, he loses out on the other forty nine <laughs> states, and then he misses out on a gold star. Hashtag justice for Pioneer Phil. <laughs> Zach, I don't know why you're going to bat for Pioneer Phil. So. Tyler, can we get a gold star for the hashtag justice for Pioneer Phil? I'm assuming no, the, but <laughs> guys, the reason we keep asking Tyler for gold stars is. Because in this episode, DJ is getting Tommy ready for his interview for the area's most prestigious preschool. Hey, Zach, how is that? Tyler, does that transition get a gold star? (laughs) (laughs) I thought I did pretty good bringing it back around to what the episode's actually was. It was a good transition. It was a very good transition. I would give it a gold star. However, I it is not my discretion. We have placed the responsibility in the hands of our wonderful producer and editor, Tyler. Tyler has given both of those previous things gold stars, so congratulations, guys. Yes! We've been good little boys. Tyler, am I doing a good job communicating your gold stars? Do I get a gold star for that? <clears throat> I'll just keep going. So, <laughs> we're Today, yeah, Tommy's yeah. going to preschool. The interviewer lady's going to come over. See if he's a good baby. And if he's a good enough baby, she'll let him into the preschool. Now, I am on the record of saying he is not a particularly good baby. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, 
knowing Tommy's track record of being a not good baby, at least in the eyes of one Mark Green, this isn't going to go well. But, you know, DJ is not taking any chances. So she banishes Steph to the basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steph is there and DJ says, Steph, go to the basement. Uh, because DJ, like us, knows that Steph is a mess. <laughs> yes. Also, I think this is the point where we realize that every sitcom under the sun has done this episode in some shape or form, including Full House. <laughs> and including Fuller House. This, this happened. Oh, yeah, this is the same. Oh, yeah, this happened with Ramona. Yeah, or there was oh, Ramona yeah. interviewed. There was also it was like Jesse and Becky were trying to get their little girl into a prestigious preschool. Oh yeah, yeah. It happened on Full House where they tried to get Alex and Nikki into a prestigious preschool. Holy shit, it's a stock episode. They're just <laughs> reusing plot lines. And like I'm fine with that sort of thing. That sort of thing happens all the time. Yeah. It's just there's like no way there's no other way to spin this plot i think is there anything that could spin the plot like maybe if the baby was actually really good at everything new girl yeah maybe maybe i new girl does a good job in that it like devolves into absolute chaos and the preschooler ends up leading a revolution against the parents and teachers the office one is not very good that mm. one, the office has that one yeah it's it's just so like there are a lot of these sort of stock episode setups that are really like starting points. Like, I don't know, you know, someone's sick, but they have the big meeting. This is also something this episode does. Max has a big presentation, but he has a fever. And so they're not going to let him go to school. But it's like because the only thing it's like, oh, he's going in for an interview for this prestigious school. And again, and that's like the only thing that can happen. You have the setup of there's a prestigious school, you have the interview, and then usually it's it usually it doesn't work because the baby has no agency. <laughs> baby has no agency. <laughs> also, also because he's a bad baby. He is a bad baby. A bad baby. I was going to say this episode, Tommy, Tommy pulls his weight. He's pretty cute. He does what they ask him to do. He he like smiles and does cheek dimple things. Tyler, do Mark and I get a gold star for our analysis of stock episodes in Full House and Fuller House? <laughs> well, now I'm feeling a little bit left out here, but sure. Hey, you got a gold star for Pioneer Phil. <laughs> no, Pioneer Phil didn't get a gold star, and also we're different people. <laughs> That's strange. I've never seen Zach and Pioneer Phil in the same... Look, Harrison, 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 I know that you've never seen me and Pioneer Phil in the same room at the same time, but that doesn't mean that we're the same person. Like, I've never been in the same room at the same time as, like, Beyonce. John Stamos or Beyonce. That's right. I mean, I could be Beyonce, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> By the way, you've never seen me in the same room as Beyonce, but I am Beyonce. I, yeah, I could be Beyonce, but I'm not. Like, I could be Pioneer Phil, but I'm not. <laughs> Zach, I'm not an idiot. I know you're not the same person as Pioneer Phil, but you started the hashtag movement. Right. Uh, that's you know, That was the only thing he was referring to. Not yeah. our good personal friend, Pioneer Phil. Our good <laughs> personal friend, Pioneer Phil. <laughs> but yeah, Max is, uh, is supposed to give his presentation on ancient Rome. He walks in, he calls everyone plebeians. Yeah. He actually, he says plebeians. Which is making me doubt how I pronounce it. And, and DJ, DJ immediately says, you know where you can go, Max? The basement. <laughs> DJ is ashamed of her family, Ouch. is what we find out this episode. <laughs> Oof. Hey, Max. Max, if you're going to keep saying that plebeian shit, you go to the basement. You live in the <laughs> basement now. You live in the basement right now with the plebeians. Yep, that's where they belong. Speaking of plebeians... <laughs> Jay hey, Money and Ramona hey, walk in. Hey, <laughs> hey, transitions. The plebeians of Forehouse, Jay Money and Ramona. <laughs> yes, Jay Money and Ramona are coming in, and they're embracing the spirit of Pioneer Day by dressing the part, mostly, uh, but not really embracing the role because uh, DJ and Kimmy have to confiscate all of their electronics. It's very... Very weird to me. They walk in saying, why do we have to dress up like pioneers for school? And they go, well, it's Pioneer Day. 
I'm like, is that a What's thing? What's the deal with Pioneer Day? You have Day? to dress up like pioneers for Pioneer Day. Also, I, if my experience with high schoolers is true, I don't think anyone would dress up for Pioneer Day. Also, <laughs> they just have Pioneer clothing. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I feel like people would. There are some people who would go all out, but I feel like, like it would there be would a mixed bag. There'd be like some people who would go all out, and then I would just show up normally. I think you and many other people. I don't I don't mean to take anything away from you. I don't think you're unique there, Zach, in that I think it would be like 10 people who really brought it. And then everybody yeah, else no, is going, say, there's like, cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking as well. But yeah, J Money and Ramona are in that first camp, although albeit very reluctantly. Yeah. And DJ and Kimmy wants to make them uh, act the parts. They take away all their electronics, including uh, the stuff they have in their hats, because... <laughs> Ramona has a Nintendo DS inside of her hat. Which because, you, know, you never know. You never know when you're going to want to play some Pokemon. And uh, <laughs> DJ's like, oh, that's a good idea. So she checks J Money. She's got to catch them all. <laughs> He's got a bag of Doritos in his hat. And she takes that away because, as we all know, the nacho cheese flavor in one Dorito would be enough flavor to overpower and kill a small child in the Pioneer Day era. A grown man could take it, and a grown woman could take it, but not a small child. <laughs> <laughs> I think it shows ingenuity on J Money's part that he, of course, chose food. I mean, come on, Ramona chose entertainment. He's embracing the pioneer spirit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Pioneer Phil would be proud. Which, like, the other thing about this is they confiscate all their electronics, which, like, I get the logic behind it of, you. it's Pioneer Day, you can't have any modern electronics. But also to, like, confiscate the Doritos and be like, they didn't have Doritos in Pioneer times. Now you kids get on the bus, which they definitely had in Pioneer times. <laughs> Go to school, which they definitely had in Pioneer times. <laughs> with your textbooks and your... Like, and your back modern backpacks and your... What's the line? <laughs> what's the line? Also, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> i remember when i like when i first got a phone part of it was just like so i could be in contact with my parents yeah i think i i resisted the idea of getting a phone before i was a teenager but my mom was like come on just get over it <laughs> like, yeah, but kimmy's like i don't want to know what are you gonna where do you are. without a phone fucking cry because you're a nerd you're a nerd <laughs> without a phone harrison that's what your mom sounds like <laughs> Harrison's mom, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. <laughs> back back in the old times, we didn't have your fancy schmancy cell phones. If we got lost, we just burst out into tears. <laughs> if you got lost, you just never saw your family again. <laughs> wow, what an interesting bit of foreshadowing, Mark. Oh, this is a very boy. literary it, podcast. It sure would be a shame if J Money and Ramona, without any electronics were to get lost somehow. Yeah, yeah it, it'd be a shame if something went wrong in this <laughs> foolproof in this plan. Sitcom. <laughs> and by, by the way, you know, Kimmy's taking away all their electronics. She takes away Ramona's Nintendo DS, which she definitely needs at school. Yes. Is the implication that she always has... Well, yeah, she's got to trade Pokemon with Chad Brad Bradley. She's got to trade Pokemon with Chad Brad Bradley. What <laughs> starter do you think Chad Brad Bradley is? Oh, or uses. I feel Oof. like Chad Brad Bradley's the kind of motherfucker who would get like both games and two DSs and then play all three so we could get all three starters in the same game. Oh God, you're so right. You're completely oh, you're right. So I was right. going to like s say like, oh, definitely he chose whatever the water type was and then move on. But you are, you have pinned down Chad Brad Bradley. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, no, maybe not that. He picks one and then he bullies his friends to trade him their starter. So he now has all three. Oh, he, and those mm, trades are yeah. definitely not fair. He's choosing yeah. his. Crap yeah, it's like, it's like he, it's like I'm going to give you you give me your Charmander and I'll give you a Bidoof. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. Chad Brad Bradley is the worst. He's so cool, but he's the worst. Which like, honestly, no, that might be too fair because as we all know, Bidoof is the greatest Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kimmy's taking away all of their electronics and Ramona says, oh yeah, I bet you couldn't survive a day without electronics. And Kimmy's like, challenge accepted. And she fucking tosses her phone out the window. Not really. DJ takes all of them and locks them in a drawer, which yeah. seems like overkill to me. Cause like I get Kimmy, but also like, aren't the kids are going to be at school. <laughs> yeah. Also there's like a whole bit where like, or DJ's like, all right, give me your phone. 
now your other phone, now your iPad, your iPad mini. And then it just like keeps going on and on. I think yeah. it's like a heart monitor as well, or like a life alert. Yeah, yeah it was a life, life alert. alert. Yeah. And then immediately my response was like, all right, Kimmy, give me your pacemaker. <laughs> Uh, I was going to make the same joke, but Zach, unlike me, Zach could remember the word pacemaker. I'm so fast. Tyler, can I get a gold star for my speed with that quip? Hell yeah. By the way, an update. I did not get a gold star for announcing Tyler's gold stars, but Mark and I did get gold stars for our analyses. So I'm glad. I'm, oh, I'm glad. Stock episodes. And yes, Zach does get a gold star. <laughs> yes! Let's go. Tyler, can you keep a running total of all of our gold stars so we know who wins at the end of yeah. the episode? Did we already mention that Max is sick? Yeah, we mentioned Max is sick. They take his, he, okay. he has a fever of like 102. Yeah. Or 100.2. No, 100. 100. 100. If it was 102, 102 I'd be that's a problem. If it was 102, he'd, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's a problem. I'm just like, I remembered the two and I was like, that's not right, but it's not like the show takes place in a reality it's pioneer day <laughs> pioneer day <sighs> so what is the next scene again the next scene is uh dj and tommy in the living room and tommy is dressed to impress heck yeah he is dressed to impress he's got the best baby suit there is i mean yeah. it's not a suit it's like a vest that's true button down shirt and a tie, but like, so, so like, maybe get a suit, Tommy. Like, yeah, step up like, your game. This is important. You don't show up to an interview with a vest and no jacket on. Come on, what's next? You're gonna wear a brown shoe and a black shoe? Like, come on. He's a very business casual baby. <laughs> <laughs> but the evaluator, Miss Emily, shows up, and I think. If DJ's defining trait is that she's the most mom, Miss Emily's defining trait is that she is the most preschool teacher anybody has ever been. Oh, oh for sure. She yeah. keeps giving DJ gold stars. And as we all know, gold stars are awesome and you should definitely be competing to get them. Tyler, do, do yeah. I get a gold star for like for loving gold stars? I, I was going to say like once that entire thing started with DJ, I wanted it to be a thing where DJ keeps earning gold stars. And then like by the end of the episode, she's just covered in gold stars. That would be incredible. It would have been a fun oh, bit. I don't get a gold star for loving gold stars. Oh no. Listen, you, you can't you can't just simply ask for a gold star for anything. You gotta earn that you shit. Earn this. That's right. <laughs> you cannot defile the sanctity that is the gold star, okay? It is the highest of honors. I've gotta be to better. I've gotta I've star. gotta get I've gotta get in the zone. Do better. I've gotta focus. Yes. I've gotta get my head in the game. Tyler, can I get a gold star for that inspiring speech? You see, at the Good Time Boys <laughs> School of Excellence, we have to strive for greatness. You know, we can't just be a bunch of plebeians. Be best. Be best. <laughs> Zach, you do get a gold star. <laughs> yes! Let's go! But, but, yeah, the... I am absolutely killing it. Miss Emily keeps giving DJ gold stars, which DJ, of course, loves. I don't have any other notes on this scene, and I forget what... If anything else happens in it. She gives her lemon squares. That's true. DJ yes. gives her Homemade lemon squares. Tyler, lemon do I get squares. a gold star for remembering? Mm, <laughs> you have to stop. <laughs> hey, I'm behind on gold stars. No, <laughs> I know. We don't. We don't. I, I, yeah, I know. And it's not a competition. <laughs> if, but I would like to say if it was a competition, I'd be Damn winning. It. I don't get a gold star. Damn it. Anyway, I feel like Zach should lose a good star for gloating about the number of gold stars. I mean, I can had. lose a good star. Just don't take a gold star. <laughs> a good star versus a gold star? Mark said a good star. I said gold star. Oh, I heard good star. What is a good star? Yeah, Tyler, you can take one away from me because I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Wait, I've, I, I 100%, I've been misspeaking and I 100% acknowledge when I misspeak. I, I'm pretty sure I said gold star. I would play it back in slow motion. <laughs> Good star. So she gives her the lemon squares, but she does not agree to give her the recipe because they're from Trader Joe's. <laughs> well, that comes up later. But okay. yes, they're quote unquote homemade lemon squares. Oh, it's yeah. because later, and this is foreshadowing, Miss Emily will betray DJ. Dun, dun, dun. No, not Miss Emily. She seems so nice. She'll be completely rationally upset with Miss Emily. <laughs> <laughs> but but the next scene 
Steph checks in on Max, who's in bed, being all sick. And Max just wants to go to school. He wants to escape. He wants to present on the Romans. He wants to present on the Romans. Actually, she walks in and Max isn't there. And he he tiptoes out from behind from the closet and starts walking out. She catches him. But, like, he fully tried to do the, what? This prison cell wasn't supposed to be empty. (laughs) We talked about it during the episode, but, like, prison guards in movies are the most gullible people in the world. (laughs) Oh, God, you're you're so right. I'm just imagining, like, you can just put, like, a a laser pointer like you do for cats. Yeah. And then a prison guard would just be like, red dot on the ground. It's moving. It's moving. (laughs) If I put my hand on it, the dot goes on top of my hand. I can't catch the it's dot. A, it's a magic dot. Yeah. It's the only explanation. <laughs> what? This cell is empty? I must open it up to investigate. <laughs> <laughs> I ch- hey, guard, look, a distraction. Where? Yeah, and then they slam the door. Oh, no, I'm trapped. What is this? This was not easily preventable. Oh no, my own hubris of checking out the empty cell has caused me to be trapped in the cell that was empty but is now full of me. How ironic, what dramatic irony. I'll take that awkward silence as a, you did a really good job with that, Zach. That was very funny. You did a very good job for that, Zach. I recommend a gold star. Tyler, can I get a gold star for that? But... Please, to make up for the one that I lost. Mm. So Max, I think, calls attention to the seams of this show because Max, in trying to convince Steph to let him go, says, you know, you have this rep around here of being like the cool aunt. And yeah. I don't think you're so cool. And you know what, Max? I have to agree. Because <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. Here's really? the thing. Okay. Here's okay. the thing. No, because... The whole thing, it goes back to our thesis about the show, that it is almost Full House, but it's something completely different. Because Steph is, quote unquote, the cool aunt. She exists to fill that role. She is the Uncle Jesse. But whereas Uncle Jesse very much is like the cool uncle who's like in a band and wears a leather jacket and stuff. Steph is a mess. That's her whole thing. I guess okay, you could look but at this. Here's, in here's a my here's way. my counterpoint. Here's my counterpoint, Mark. If Steph is not the cool aunt, who is? You have DJ and Kimmy. Oh, she's comparatively the cool aunt. I'm what I'm saying, and I'm not saying it as an insult. I just mean cool aunt is not her character. Yeah, fair. Positive counterpoint. Like, doesn't that say like that this show has progressed in a way where it has become its own thing? Like when you think oh, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah that's no, a good, a exactly. Yeah. But exactly. I'm just saying the show is apparently self-aware about this or not self-aware enough that it still thinks Steph is the cool aunt and Ooh, Max is yeah. now trying to leverage it. That's mm. that's true. Because I think the show always thought it was more like Full House than it was. Whereas, again, even from the first episode, we're like, this is bizarro Full House. It's <laughs> almost Full House, but it's not. Mm. So that's that's my thing about that exchange. But he does try to do this thing of, you know, if you were so cool, you'd let me go to school. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't listen to my mom, that loser. So he tries to bribe her with a 20. Yeah. Which, to his credit, almost works. Because yeah. Steph is so broke. Steph is so <laughs> broke. She need, she needs that 20. She needs that 20 so badly. Uh, but she doesn't <laughs> take it. She doesn't take the bait. She goes on. She remains strong. What a trooper, Steph. Gold star for being a trooper, Steph. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But but Max says, oh, but, you know, can you get me my, I forget, is it the Financial Times or like the Wall Street Journal or something that I left downstairs yeah. and read to me? So he gets her out of the room because he has a master plan to escape. Yes, his ingenious plan, which I can't wait to cover. Yeah, <laughs> as there are so many things wrong with wrong with the way yep. he expresses that plan. Yes, but it's it's great. <laughs> yeah. Next scene, 
J Money and Ramona missed their bus. Who could have known? <laughs> because they don't know what time it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who could have anticipated that? <laughs> they don't know what time it is because J Money doesn't have his phone. They try to go to a payphone, but they don't know anybody's numbers. I mean, uh, kids fault these on days. them for being absolute idiots and not being able to tell what time it is by looking at the sun. Yeah. Not, they're not like real pioneers. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if this episode was about, like, them becoming more like their pioneer ancestors? <laughs> like, just like the Spongebob episode, when they yeah. end up, like, driving a rock or something over to the school. Yes. <laughs> it finally works, something from the pioneer days. Yeah. But then they go to, oh, okay, we'll catch the next bus. But they don't have any money because Jay Money left his money at home, of course. And Ramona, or maybe he just doesn't have any money. Oh, no, yeah, because you're, he's you're right. Uh, Jay Money doesn't have money. Ramona left hers at home. Yeah. Ramona like, left yes. hers at home because it was in her phone case. Yeah. Who could have known right. any of this was going to go wrong? <laughs> so, uh, but then Jay Money takes off his cap and someone throws a, a nickel in it. And he's yeah. like, oh my God, we can just make money from doing nothing. Well, there's a fantastic exchange where he says, like, that guy just gave me money. And Ramona says, yeah, because you look pathetic. And he, and he looks absolutely touched. And he says, <laughs> wow, I didn't even try. And here's where I made my greatest prediction of the episode, which is where he embraces his new calling again as a beggar. Yep. <laughs> uh, <which, yeah. laughs> so good just so j money so perfectly yeah gold star for that prediction <laughs> please so perfectly that character oh my god it's so, perfect yeah he uh they they start becoming street performers for money uh that's their ingenious plan to get to i guess school oh thanks Tyler, <laughs> also, for gold star. okay <laughs> but also i'd like to point out as well like i am to be trivia time ladies and gentlemen pioneer day is a big holiday in the state of Utah, which is where Pioneer Phil is from. So, like, I think he kind of went out in the end. But also, uh, it's observed on July 24th, according to IMDb, which is not during a school day. It's in the summer. So why are they celebrating Pioneer Day in, I don't know what time of year, but not the summer. Zach, huh. A-plus sleuthin there. Cinemason sleuthin. I think Zach should get a gold star for sleuthin. Mark, your uh, your argument for me getting a gold star means the world to me. Uh, I would love to get. Do I get gold a gold star. star for being generous? <laughs> okay, don't push it. <laughs> wow. So, Listen, as I said earlier, gold stars are not given out; they must be earned. I think Tyler. Is I when asked, he did I earn a gold star? And you're like, whether no, Mark, or not no, someone gets. <laughs> did a gold I earn star. a good star through advocating that Zach gets a gold star? And Zach's just like, no, Mark, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for advocating I get a gold star, but Mark, no, you do not deserve one. <laughs> Tyler gives a gold star to all our three previous requests. So there we go. Okay. Thank you, Tyler. I, I can I can live with that. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying it's not what I would have gone with, but I can live with it. Tyler, I know I don't have the authority, but I would give you 50 gold stars for the work you do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can we take away a gold star from Mark for blatant bribery? <laughs> Zach, Speaking of bribery, Zach. back to the episode. Two things, two things, two things. One, I wasn't trying to get a gold star. I was just trying to thank Tyler because he does a lot of work and this podcast would fall apart without him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that uh, I'm just uh, legitimately saying that. And two, as we established, this isn't a competition. We're just trying to get gold stars. But Zach is being It's not very a competition to you, hey, okay? Hey. I need to win. Hey, hey, hey. The gold stars are a measure of good behavior. Can, should we get a gold star taken away from Zach for being so cutthroat? No, no, in this no, no, no gold I promise I'll be good. Debate? I'll be good. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, before we say anything else, I think I should lose a gold star for suggesting this stupid gold star thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> should we just stop the gold stars then? No. Okay. Then no, we'll we cannot going. end. We the are doing stars. it to the Anyways. end of the episode. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Although Tyler, Tyler, if it matters, uh, Mark I didn't give you fifty. I give you like a hundred gold stars. Um. <laughs> but but only I lose for bribery. Anyway, Tyler just said no. But we suggested so many gold star losses. I don't remember which one. So. <laughs> but but anyway, back in the show, 
Kimmy is playing Candy Crush. And yeah. you might be confused because she doesn't have her phone. But guys, do you want to say how Kimmy is playing Candy Crush? By putting a bunch of pieces of Tandy on a wooden block of kind, a game board, and just smashing them with a mallet? <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> smashes that candy with a hammer. <laughs> Which seems rather counterproductive, because then she's going to have to clean up that candy. Yeah. And that's level two, baby. Or just make DJ do it, I guess. Because <laughs> that's basically how this family works. I yeah. Assume. <laughs> DJ has to clean up ever after everybody else. I mean, she was top tier mom in this episode. I mean, she had yeah. a thermometer just like out of nowhere. When yeah, she when she to needs to check Max's, Max's temperature. temperature. She just yeah, she just like pulls it out of hammer space. And just <laughs> sticks it in his ear. <laughs> hammer space. <laughs> yeah, MC Hammer's space. The extra dimensional plane that MC Hammer comes can't yeah. argue with that logic, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Where does that expression come from? I know I've heard that before. That anyway. I that I can't tell you. <laughs> but Kimmy also hands DJ a note and says it's a prehistoric text. And just like, Kimmy, you grew up before texting. So just like the whole, this is prehistoric. <sighs> it's like, Kimmy, like, you survived many a day without this. She, uh, she, she doesn't remember those times ever since That's her true. tragic accident. She, she and Fernando did a lot of drugs when they first started <laughs> dating. So there are a lot of years that are kind of hazy for old Kimmy Gibbler. That's, yes, definitely yeah. it. So, uh, how does this scene end? Uh, those are the only notes I have about this scene. I think it's just DJ saying, Kimmy, you're going crazy. What is up with this episode that I can't remember how any of these scenes end? <laughs> well, well, I know we've been pleasantly surprised by some of the recent episodes, but I do not think this is a very good episode. No, it's no. not very good. I, I, this is the Fuller House we know and love. Yeah, I didn't I didn't remember much about this episode, but when we started watching it, the second um, Ramona and Jay Money come in in Pioneer costumes, I went, oh, it's this episode. Yeah, this one same. was bad. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the end. That was the end of the good era. Yep. <laughs> or at least a blip in it. But uh, Ramona and Jay Money are busking. They're they're singing uh, Froggy Camel Courtin and dancing. Yeah. I had never money. heard that song before. Is that real? That's a song. Yeah. <laughs> I had never heard that song. Uh, me neither. Am I yeah. uncultured? I don't know. <laughs> Can we give Mark a gold star for being cultured? Mm, he's not as versed in the pioneer times. <laughs> See, Mark, I can be good. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate your goodness. You're welcome. I didn't so, get a gold star though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it was worth it. It was worth a try. I'm, I appreciate it. I really do. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Yeah. Um, J Money says. Uh, Ramona's like, who knew you could just make money by asking for it? And J Money says, yeah, who needs school? I'm going to be a beggar. Yay. I think he does Harrison refer to it as right. his true calling. Yeah. <laughs> Harrison was right. Harrison was right. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. He So he's going to be a barista, a beggar, <laughs> later on a professional football kicker. <laughs> and, and he's going to eat at Arby's every day. Every day. That's how he'll make sponsor money as a professional YouTuber. They have the Arby's. meats. I do like that it's almost like he went, The it's almost like the writers went, he wants to be a professional barista. What's one step lower than that? <laughs> <laughs> a full beggar. Um, but they're, they're having a grand old time. But guys, who should show up? But the police. Because people have been complaining, not yep. because they're begging, but because they suck. Yeah. <laughs> they're very bad. They extremely suck. They do not say like, oh, there were noise complaints. He says, ah, people were complaining. And they say, oh, is this illegal? And they say, no, you're just real bad. The cop is very good in this episode. Oh, he's very good. I also know that Ramona is wearing a dress, but she is a dancer. Yeah. Did she not think of anything better to do for panhandling than singing that song? That's that's yeah. true. 
The cop says, uh, we got some reports that there were some Amish kids panhandling here. I should be Ramona's panhandling strategist. That's true. <laughs> and I did a good start for being a panhandling strategist. <laughs> I also want to say this cop comes in and starts talking to J Money and Ramona, and this cop is quite possibly the best character in this entire episode. Oh, he's yes. great. Yeah. He's wonderful. He's, I so I want him to return so much. I know he doesn't become a regular character, but I so wish he became I a regular wish he character. Did. He should be. He would have been good. I wish he did. He's a he's amazing. Yeah, he's am, he's amazing and I love him very much. <laughs> yes. Our good sweet boy. A good sweet boy. Uh, but <laughs> DJ's with Miss Emily. She's talking about what a great parent she is, how she's always on top of everything with her kids. And then at that same moment, Max climbs out the window in a toga. <sighs> uh, apparently, I did get a gold star. And also, now we get to talk about Max's shitty escape plan. Yeah. <laughs> not only is he doing it in front of an open window, he seems to blame it on not having long enough sheets, which isn't the problem because he reaches the ground with the amount of sheets he has. Mm. This plan would have failed no matter what he did. <laughs> I feel like he also should have known, like, maybe if you're going to rappel out the window, don't go within the line of sight of a window where you know your mom is going to be. Yeah, I was going to say the flaw in his plan is that his window is above a, a lower, larger window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> But also like a lower, larger window in the room where DJ is in. Yeah. And has been in for the entire day. This is true. There are so many moving parts in this plan. Ooh, oh, I need Max to plan a heist. Yes. <laughs> Spin-off episode, Max plans yeah. a yes. heist. Max plans a heist. Okay, who's the team? It's got to be Max. You got to include J Money and Ramona. Yeah, Max, J Money, Ramona. I feel like yeah, there's like, okay, wait, hold on. Here's my, here's another pit. I have two suggestions. Either one. Fernando joins the team of the heist or Fernando creates a rival heist gang or Max's. Fernando is the security guy in the bank who's trying to stop the heist. Ooh, I, I mean, I just like the idea of Fernando being like a rival heist man. <laughs> okay, two competing heist I, gangs. Because <laughs> I super think they need Fernando to create a distraction in the casino. Oh, he has to like. Well, yeah, that's how someone. that's how the movie ends. That's how the movie ends. Max and Fernando learn to put aside their differences <laughs> and, and join, join gangs forces. for the big heist. Yeah. Wait, didn't we already do this spinoff? We with a did bunch of celebrities? Panda heist. I feel like we have like the. We did. We oh, did the panda, panda heist, heist where we did our panda own heist, draft right. for panda heist teams. Right, the panda heist. <laughs> Which, by the way, we put that on Twitter like a while ago. I won that too. So like <laughs> Zach, your competitive streak is coming out in this episode, and I don't think it's a good look. Says the person who's losing. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, you proved me wrong. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Are I losing if we're counting the number of stars? I don't know. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. Fair point. That was a good retort. Anyway, we should Zach, keep moving. We're also learning that Zach is a very sympathetic winner. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I am humble in victory and also in defeat. I mean, I wouldn't really know about defeat because I don't lose, but... You're humble in victory and also in defeat. Coincidentally, you do not know what the word humble means. <laughs> humble means I like it when I win, right? Zach, you would be great on Total Drama Island. <laughs> oh my god. Remember Total Drama Island? Yeah. Oh, do I remember Total Drama Island? It's the greatest show ever. Oh, that's great. Anyway, DJ is saying, ah, oh, this is, I'm a good mom. I'm taking, he's very sick. That's why I didn't let him go to school. I'm, I'm, I have no problem with my kids. And just at that moment, who should show up but a police officer <laughs> escorting her kid into the house. <laughs> and there's a very good exchange where Jay Money says, <laughs> says, Ramona was dancing in the street and strangers were giving her money. <laughs> and Ramona just fucking knocks it out of the park by saying, I, I guess I know how I'm going to pay for college now. <laughs> good thinking on her part. Good thing on her part. I love that she's not like, hey, I like that she just joins along. 
Best and, characters yeah. in the show. Best Jesus. characters oh, in the show. Sure. They're such a good duo. Exuding that protagonist sidekick energy. Yeah. I, I mean, I know Fernando is the best, but I'm like, if there had to be a show about some about these characters, like they're the main characters I would watch yeah. a show oh, about. Oh, for yeah. sure. They're so good. Oh, they're wonderful. So they they leave, but and then the <laughs> the cop enters full investigation mode. Yeah. He doesn't buy that this family is actually Amish. Yeah, well, he said something about like, yeah, or there was something. There was like, something where it's like, yeah. you're not you, you're Amish, but you have electricity, so I guess you're just um, ish. And that's, that's get it. It's those get it. It's those zingers it? that make us love the cops so much. I do you guys get, it. get it. I do get, get it. it. Hey, they got it. I get it. Tyler, can we get a gold star for getting the joke <laughs> collectively, like the three of us? Yeah, it's not that we each get another gold star. There's one no, gold it's star. it's one star that we all share anyways. collectively. <laughs> so we all have like 0. 0.3333333 stars. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> we do get that 0. 0.333 yep. stars. So yeah, but <laughs> I think, is it the cop's going to take them to school? They, or he's the just, he's uh, DJ the cop, asks yeah. the, the cop to drive them back to school. Yeah. And right. the cop's like, yeah, sure. Cause I'm an Uber now, apparently or yeah. something like that. And, and Ramona says to him, can we stop and get donuts on the way? Or is that an offensive stereotype that cops love donuts? And he goes, that is a stereotype, but also I love donuts. <laughs> I <laughs> said it is like that is a very that is a very offensive stereotype, and I do not like the fact that you asked for that. But also, yes, we will be getting donuts because I love them. This 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 character is so good, and I wish he'd He's show wonderful. up in other episodes. I love him. I love him so much. He does. I don't think he has a name, but uh, I love our good. Hold on, I'm checking IMDb. I love our good boy. Also, in the background, Miss Emily is smiling the entire time. Yes. And DJ's like, hey, do you ever like not smile? And she goes. No, I'm smiling all the time, except for when I go to bed at night and cry myself to sleep and oh, scream into my pillow. No, Jeez. her exact words are, um, no, I don't let my big feelings out un until I get home and scream into my pillow, <laughs> but I'm not home yet. <laughs> yep. she, just, her, she just starts cracking. Okay, I, I will also great. say uh, the cop does not have a name. He's Aww. just listed on IMDb as cop. Maybe uh, that is his name. Yeah, I mean, we, we you can't prove that it isn't. He was his, named his name cop. is Jeffrey Cop. The cop. I was, oh, was going to say his name's like Cop Smith. His parents, his parents just really his wanted, parents him, really to wanted him to become a cop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, you know, it's actually short for police officer Smith. <laughs> it's short for Copathan. <laughs> Copathan Smith. Uh, but anyway. But yeah. I mean, I, I heard that I heard that line about like screaming into her pillow and I was like, it may be a, it's a bit early for this at this point in the episode. But do we know who our sad boy of the week is? We'll, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. But like, I wouldn't say we quite she would became a competition. She became a contender with that one line. She became a contender. There is competition, but she became a contender with that one line. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> DJ brings Max back to his room where Steph is reading to what she thinks is a sleeping Max. <laughs> she apparently has been reading this entire time. I I would also like to point out she's she's reading uh, a financial article because Max specifically requested it earlier yes. in the episode. She's reading a financial article. A couple things. One, if you think he is fully asleep, usually you stop reading to a child after they they conk out. She just became so invested in finance. That's true. That's that's a yeah. good <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Um, but also, it means Max's plan worked. Yeah. <laughs> it completely worked, and it Steph was work. fooled. Max yeah. comes in with DJ, and Steph realizes that she was, in fact, not reading to a sleeping child, but in fact, she over she tears off the covers to reveal a very good boy underneath the covers. <laughs> That's right. The decoy was not a bunch of pillows or something. It was... Cosmo in a wig and pajamas. It was if, the dog. There are so many moving parts in this plan. What yeah. if the dog had gotten up before Steph came Yeah, that, like, that dog laid down... Like I'm guessing that dog like did not move at all. That's which some seems good unrealistic. Training. I mean, we all, we all have dogs. How often do they sit still? <laughs> not at all. Exactly. Ex and to be fair, they do look exactly alike. <laughs> Yes. 
Where did Max get a wig? <laughs> that's true. Where, where did Max get a wig? So many yeah, things in this plan. And it's not even like he got a stolen one, like hair extension or something from like Seth or Kimmy or like one of the adults. Because it's like, it's different. His hair is different from like everyone else in the family. Unless he, unless it's like J Money has a wig. J, wait, hold on. J Money has, he wears a tube. He suffers from male pattern baldness at his young age. I'm just. I, I, don't I even would. Know what I would not anymore. put it past J Money to wear to wear a toupee. <laughs> it's J Money's toupee. <laughs> he suffers from male pattern baldness at a very young age. It's quite oh, unfortunate. Yes, but Max Max tells Steph like, "Oh, I just wanted to give my presentation," and Steph says, "What if you could give your presentation right from your room?" Wait, you're talking about doing school remotely? I know. Oh, that's ridiculous. Who would ever do this, that? This this episode got sad all of a sudden. <laughs> sad by way of recent or not so recent events. Uh, mm. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be an interesting time capsule for people in yep. 2074 or whatever. Yes. 2074. Hey, leave a comment if you're watching in 2074. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 40 years from now. Wait, 34 years from now. Remote learning is revolutionary at this time and very sad in our time. Yeah. Yeah. We, we go back with DJ and Miss Emily and Tommy. Miss Emily tells DJ that, um, you know, it's nothing bad. It ha It's very common, but she says Tommy is a little behind in his language skills. But, you know, if he started working with a speech therapist, maybe he could join them in spring. And DJ gets so offended by this very kind and innocuous <laughs> rejection. She's a very nice lady who screams into her pillow when she gets back yeah. home. She's trying yeah. her best. Like, she, yeah. she doesn't say, I don't think he's, you know, Discovery Center material. She says he's a little behind in his language skills. But, you know, if he gets working on them, you know, maybe in the spring he can come be with us. Yeah. And DJ goes, how dare you? I'm not giving you, you my lemon square recipe. You, you smiling demon woman. I am not giving you my lemon square recipe. And then she throws the lemon squares at the wall and points to the door. She <laughs> shoves them in her face and she's like, yes. and, and she like knocks Miss Emily to the ground and starts kicking her and going, get up, get up, <laughs> get out of my house. And then she starts speaking a satanic incantation and drawing a pentagram on the floor of her own house. It's really weird. This episode got dark. According to our commentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Miss Emily leaves. Next scene, Max gives his report on the assassination of Julius Caesar. He reenacts it. Steph pretends to stab him. He goes, et tu brute? Which, like, Max should do more Shakespeare. Oh, yes. I mean, we all know that J Money is, should be in the theater, but I think it's just more genetic. All of DJ's kids should be. This is true. No joke. I think Max would make a good Iago. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. Oh yeah. Max would play Iago, and J Money would be would have auditioned, but then the stage crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds right. J, J Money is more of a false step. <laughs> just a big drunk idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. so uh <laughs> so dj freaks out yep. at miss emily and then she has a nice little conversation with steph right where she's like hey you know if first of all you you didn't and dj was like real upset she's like i didn't give her my lemon square recipe because i was freaking out and steph's like well first of all you, you bought them at trader joe's and uh second off you can just like Go to a speech yeah, therapist. Yeah. Well, I like do the thing she said. I really <laughs> liked how they did it because Steph, I guess after a day of being tricked by an eight year old, she pours herself a big glass of wine and DJ's <laughs> telling her about everything and saying like she said Tommy's behind in his speech skills and needs to see a therapist and then maybe can come in the spring. Isn't that ridiculous? And Steph just says nothing but takes a long sip of wine. <laughs> and she's like. That's ridiculous, right? And stuff's like, eh, actually. <laughs> Plus, she had a lisp. So, yeah. makes sense. They yeah. have a nice conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah Steph's Steph just like, says DJ, to DJ, I had a lisp, and look at me now. Yeah. 
to look a at, very successful woman. Look at look at how I'm doing now. Takes another big sip of wine. <laughs> And she does say Tommy is a little behind where Max and J Money were at his age. She says J Money, which is really weird because we met, we started calling him J Money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also it's like, yeah. wow, J Money was more advanced than someone comparatively. <laughs> J Money succeeded at something. Yeah. Well, he was a bad boy back in the day. Yeah. I, I, though, I was pretty sure at that age he was just, like, accidentally setting things on fire. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, we have, we have met people who accidentally set stuff on fire. Jay Money is oh. right on the money there. <laughs> mm. oh. Right on the J Money. Right on the J Money. Hey, oh. But DJ gives Tommy a gold star. She says, I'm going to get you that speech therapist. You did really good today. She gives him a gold star. Tommy... Gives her a thumbs up and says that famous phrase, you got it, dude. Yeah. Hey, the audience the doesn't thing. cheer where I'm like, I feel like that's something this audience would cheer at, right? Tommy saying, you got it, dude. Michelle's catchphrase. Did they do an awe? I, I thought there wasn't a reaction. Hmm. I don't know. Right? I don't think there was a We'd reaction. Have to do no, like a, right. a replay, a slow-mo replay. Yeah. Which I don't is, think there was a reaction. Given just given how much this audience reacts to innocuous shit, I'm just really surprised there wasn't a reaction to "You got it, dude." Yeah, you got it, dude. And that's kind of where it ends. I think right? yeah, that's that's where the episode ends. Yeah, which yep. on this special Pioneer Day special of Fullest House, <laughs> which <laughs> brings us to Sad Boy of the Week. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of contenders, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. No, wait, this doesn't really make much sense. I was going to suggest Tommy for the first time. After all, it is called a Tommy tale. But that seems unfair to give it to a baby with poor language skills. (laughs) I don't think he's the sad boy. I think my big big nominees are Jay Money, who at this point almost gets a nomination by default. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yes. And Steph. Yes. And I will also suggest Miss Emily. Yeah, I was also going to suggest Miss Emily. Emily. Yeah. I think these contenders have a lot. Yep. All right. I'm going to be honest. I, I got to give it to Miss Emily here. I think the one line, honestly, is what did it for me. <laughs> Just the one line where she was like, Are you happy all the time? Oh, I don't let my big feelings out, except for when I go home and scream into my pillow every night. Right. And it's just like, that is exactly what that is the exact type of energy we are looking for in a sad boy of the week she's got my vote i don't even think i'm sorry we're i'm sorry i'm voting before mark is running down all the options but uh all right let's keep the the debate going because i might i might actually differ i and you know you guys can outvote me but it's a very good line but i'll i'll start with i'll start with miss emily biggest that line yes yeah chef's kiss Perfect. Perfect sad boy moment. There's also her maybe compulsive tendency to give gold stars. <laughs> a compulsion we don't relate to at all. Yeah. Tyler, can I Tyler, get a gold star? Tyler, do I get a gold star, star for, for pointing, pointing out she has a compulsion for giving gold stars? <laughs> oh, but you can't both get a gold star for that. <laughs> um, but also she's just like happy all the time. But in a way where where we're all just kind of thinking, hey, Miss Emily, blink twice if you're in immediate danger and being kidnapped. She's happy oh, wait, all the time. Tyler does give us but both I, a gold star. Yeah, <laughs> this is bullshit. I'm questioning the integrity of the system. Let, let me let me continue with my recap. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because yes, she's happy all the time. I took that more as a, I think she does care about her job and like her job. Okay. Yeah. It is a little unsettling given the line, um, but then also I think in her case. She wants that lemon square recipe and DJ doesn't give it to her. That bitch. And also, there isn't a lemon square recipe. And also, hey, like, hand it to her for having such a stressful job and using and letting out her feelings in a constructive way. Yeah. Turning it into a pillow is totally fine. We should be more respectful of mental yeah. health. But so, J Money. <laughs> J Money. Money. J Money is forced to dress up like a pioneer. <laughs> 
His phone and Doritos are taken from him. He misses his bus. And I think they say it's his fault that they missed the bus yes. also. Which is one reason I think we're not putting Ramona up on the yeah, list here. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has no money. He just looks so innately pathetic that people start giving him money. Oh, God. He decides his greatest ambition in life is to be a beggar. <laughs> That's his calling. Yep. He he gets arrested, but in the end, I guess, makes this cool new police officer friend. Yay! <laughs> Yay! A new friend. Things new are looking friend. up J-Money. Things are looking up <laughs> Everything is coming up J-Money. Yep. Now, and Steph, oh, Steph. Steph is told by her sister, you're not good enough for this lady from this school. You have to go to the basement. She's then told by an eight-year-old that she isn't the cool aunt. She's told by an eight-year-old that she isn't a cool aunt. And then gets almost bribed by a $20 bill. She almost takes the bribe. <laughs> she then is definitely tricked when he says, could you get me my financial report? <laughs> and she leaves, allowing him to escape. <laughs> she completely falls for the decoy. She completely falls for a dog in a wig. And reads to Max for hours. Maybe it's not hours, but it's a while to not realize that is not a human being that is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then just ends her day with her classic cup of wine. Yep. I mm, I'm I'm torn. I I know I know it seems Zach you're voting Miss Emily. Yes, I think I think she's got my vote. Uh I don't know. I just that one line really won me over. It it was a strong piece yeah. of evidence. A very very strong case in 2 seconds, which is exactly what Sad Wave of the Week is all about. I think in my heart of hearts, I have to choose Steph. I was going to go with her, too. I I think it is so sad and so funny that she gets tricked by Max. This whole episode, she just gets shit on. <laughs> she just gets so tricked great. again and again by an eight-year-old <laughs> and a dog. Every part of her is brought out, including her, her old lisp. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I love it. I have to vote Steph. Her financial history, her alcoholism. I mean, not really an al alcoholism, but you know, her her, her tendency yeah. to drink a lot of no, wine. No, the alcoholism. <laughs> but so is that Steph? Does Steph I, have I'm it? Guessing Steph. That's a, I'm guessing that's a Steph win because you, you guys both voted for her. All right. She takes it. Another win for Steph. She She's much sadder than I remembered her being when we first yeah. watched this show. I, I believe... This either puts Steph in a tie for second or she takes second uh, in the f in the full rankings. J-Money is still very much ahead, uh, but Stephanie is uh, closing that gap. Love it. I th well, I think I think that's it for this episode. Zach, you want to take us home? Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Tyler has given us the gold star total with Mark, five, Zach, five. Me, six. This is bullshit! And Tyler, 150 <laughs> gold stars. Well, well congratulations to Tyler. To Tyler. I guess. Congratulations I mean, to it, Tyler. Guys, it, guys, we need to remember, it's not a competition, all right? This means nothing. I, this means nothing to me. And plus, this competition was bullshit anyway. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> on that note, uh... That's going to be it for another episode of the Fullest House Podcast, guys. If you like what you just listened to, you can like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Fullest House Pod. Once again, I'm Zach Horowitz. I'm Mark Green. And I'm Harrison Bloom. And until next time, may your houses be fuller and happy Pioneer Day, everybody. God bless us, everyone. This episode was not recorded, nor will it be released on Pioneer Day. The Fullest House Podcast is not sponsored by Pioneer Man or Pioneer Phil. If you experience a Pioneer Day that lasts longer than four hours, please consult the doctor. Mm -hmm.